Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm sitting on my office floor today and we are doing a good old fashioned makeup tutorial like it's like it's 2010. <laughs> I feel like I have not done a tutorial where I just kind of sit down, talk through the makeup without anything else going on in such a long time. And yesterday I was very deeply inspired by a makeup artist named Hindash that I discovered yesterday as I was browsing the tube. His makeup tutorials are so gorgeous and so informative. I learned so much. I literally had my notebook out and I was taking notes. He applies makeup in a way that really speaks to me. It's this perfect mix of glam and also a sprinkle of approachability where I find a lot of his makeup looks, even though they can be really beautiful and glamorous, they still have this really down to earth vibe to them, which I really, really love. And like I said, he just is such a good teacher. And so I decided that because I was so inspired by him, I would follow one of his tutorials. So I chose his most recent video, which is called My Signature Summer Makeup. And this was the result. It's a quintessential summer makeup look. It's bronzy, it's glowy, it's glossy, nothing too crazy out of the ordinary, but there are certain tricks and tips that I followed that I feel like just made such a big difference and really created such a beautiful effect in the end that I really really love so I'm pretty much following his tutorial but I do add my own little little touch here and there I also switch up some of the products as well all right that's enough to chatting let's get into it so I'm going to just first prep my skin with some skincare so I'm going to go in with a moisturizer this is an oldie but a goodie my Laneige moisture cream I love this for underneath makeup. It's really lightweight. It doesn't disturb the foundation, but it still gives a nice moisturized base for my foundation to sit on. So I'm just going to put a nice thin layer of this all over my skin. And something that I realized I didn't normally do, but Hindash does do, is he puts the moisturizer down the neck, which obviously makes sense. First of all, you want to always moisturize your neck and take care of this area. But if you do plan on putting makeup on and down your neck, you want to prep that as well. So I'm just putting a nice thin layer on that, on that bad boy. For my eye cream, I'm going to go in with my Laneige eye gel. I'm just going to take a little tiny dollop of that and pop that right underneath the eyes. I'm also going to prep my lips. So I'm going to take my Bite Agave lip mask put a really nice thick layer on so my lips are really plump and moisturized by the time I put on a lip product. So now let's move on to the foundation. Now this is definitely a very skin focused look. There's a lot of intentional glow going on in the face. The skin looks really fresh. So all the products that are being applied are obviously being applied with that intention in mind. By the way, his video is a NARS focused video. Every single product that he uses is by NARS. I do believe this particular video was a partnership with NARS. So I am going to be using a lot of NARS products today, but I did make sure to kind of switch up a couple things because I also didn't want this to be solely a NARS makeup video. So so for his base, he did use the Sheer Glow, and he mixed a one-to-one -one ratio with the NARS Super Radiant Booster, and this is a illuminator, so it's going to obviously give the foundation a lot more of a glow. So I'm going to do the same thing, do a one-to-one -one ratio, but I am going to be using my Oma Say What Weightless Soft Matte Hydrating Foundation. So I'm going to pump out one pump on the back of my hand, and then squeeze a nice little dollop of the illuminator to give it a nice glow. To apply this little concoction, I am going to use my sponge because I do want a really, really lightweight finish. While I am able to get that with a brush, and he does actually use a brush in his video, I feel like you're able to get more of a skin-like finish with the sponge a little bit more effortlessly. And I also have not used a foundation sponge, like a beauty blender, in such a long time. I am kind of was craving to use one. And this foundation also has a little bit more coverage to it. I think more coverage, honestly, than the NARS Sheer Glow. So I do want it to be quite sheared out. Something that I noticed in the way that Hindash applies his makeup is he's very, very light-handed and he does very, very thin layers with everything that he does. He instead tends to build things up instead of just going in right away with a lot of product. And in the end, that's just going to give the look a very natural finish. It's never going to look overdone. Can we also just take a moment for this foundation combo because it is so beautiful. I think also because we use a sponge the foundation looks like one with the skin. It doesn't look like it's sitting on top of it at all. And it's interesting because I honestly expected that mixing in that much of that illuminator would make my face look kind of like an oil slick. It just gave my skin an overall really healthy glow. 
So Hindash is after my own heart because he is in love with creams as much as I am. From what I've seen from his tutorials, he pretty much layers creams underneath all of his powders. So he will go in first with a cream bronzer and a cream blush, and then later on in the application, he will layer a powder. So what I normally do is I will take my cream product, I will go in directly from the compact and just start blending it onto my skin right off of the bat. What he does though is he will mark out the areas that he wants to apply the cream, so he'll just kind of dot it all over the face. And then he'll go in with whatever he used to apply his foundation to blend it out. He uses his foundation brush or foundation sponge specifically because he says that it helps to blend the product a lot easier since you do have a little bit of that leftover foundation on your tool, so it's going to just really melt into the skin. So for my cream bronzer today, I'm gonna to take my Fenty Cheeks Out Cream Bronzer in Butter Biscuit. I'm just gonna dot it with my finger where I want it. So he tends to put it around the hairline on the forehead. He also, of course, puts it on the cheekbones. I actually think it's helpful to use your finger when doing this because you could actually feel out where your cheekbones are and you could apply it in the perfect place. He also puts a little bit on the chin, like underneath the chin, on the top of the lip. And he also puts some underneath the nose. I'm gonna use a brush for this just so I can be precise. And right on the top of the tip of the nose. So then he does go in with his foundation brush to blend it out, but I did use a sponge. So I'm just gonna use the same sponge that I used to apply my foundation. There is still a little bit of that leftover foundation, so it is going to do the trick, and it blends out super easily. I mean, honestly, the Fenty bronzers blend out easily no matter what, um, but this definitely makes it look super seamless. If there's one product that I can sometimes go a little bit heavy handed with, it is my concealer. And I try so hard not to do it because I know as I'm doing it, I'm like, Jamie, this is going to crease. This is going to look heavy. You Maybe you should hold back a little bit. But for some reason, it's just become kind of second nature for me to just pile on more concealer than I really need. And so what I've noticed with Hindash is he uses a very small amount of concealer. And not only that, but he uses it in very select and specific places to actually create an effect on the skin because you're not just applying concealer just to apply it. Concealer is meant to brighten, to lift, to do both. So obviously you do wanna apply it specifically in those areas where you want to brighten and lift. I don't think he did this in this particular video, but in some of his other videos, he actually uses two different concealers, one to color correct and then one to brighten. So I think I am gonna try that today. Just because I typically don't do that, I will just go in with one concealer. And so I do wanna do something a little bit different today just because why not? So I have my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealers here. This one is in the shade Light 2.8, and then the lighter one is in the shade Light 2. So I'm gonna use this guy to color correct, and then I'm gonna use this guy to brighten up. So I'm mainly going to use the darker shade here, but I'm gonna go directly underneath my eyes. I'm gonna put like three dots, and then I'm also putting a little line of concealer right on my outer corner, and this is just gonna help, again, lift the eye and start to create this really pretty cat eye shape, which is actually also going to elongate my eye. He also puts a really small amount right on the sides of the nose, and then he also specifically goes on the inner corner of the eyes, on the bridge, and he also puts a little bit right underneath the cheekbone area probably to make the contour or bronzer pop and just look a little bit cleaner. He doesn't really mention why he does that, but that's typically why you, you would do that. So going back in with my Beauty Blender, and I'm just gonna pat out that concealer. So I just took my lighter concealer and I put it right over here. So I kind of lined it up with my eyeballs when I'm looking straight ahead. And again, this is just to really brighten and lift this particular area of my eye. And so the reason why I didn't put that concealer directly underneath my eyes is because I don't want my under eyes to look super stark and bright and unnatural looking. Sometimes if you do use a concealer that is like two or three shades lighter than your skin tone and you put it directly underneath your eyes, it's going to look really stark. And yes, that does photograph really beautifully, but in person it can just look a little bit harsh and so instead of putting it directly underneath my eyes i'm putting it much much lower and because i am using a sponge it is soaking up the majority of the product so it's really just putting a hint of that brightness right 
here so I look really really awake but it's not super stark and it's also blending into that darker concealer that I did already apply so again it's just not too too harsh or too intense. So he uses the NARS Translucent Crystal Light Reflecting Setting Powder to very lightly set a couple areas on the face, so I'm gonna do the same. Um, I am going to use that on this Sigma Soft Blend 40 brush. This is a very, very, very lightweight product. Like when you put your brush into this powder, you barely even pick up any product. Um, so this is going to apply to the skin very lightly as well. I used to hate this powder, um, because I didn't really fully understand it. I thought that it was just a really hard pressed powder that just didn't work because you could barely get any product onto your brush, but I've realized that that's kind of the whole point of it. And it's actually really great if you have a drier skin type because it doesn't over apply the powder. So it's never gonna make you look too dry or too cakey, which powder can obviously sometimes do. And it still gives such a pretty glow to the skin because this powder does have a little bit of a a little bit of a sheen to it. It's not over the top, but it's not going to completely mattify you. So it's actually quite beautiful. Okay, so then he goes in with a cream blush. I am going to use a liquid blush from M Cosmetics. This is in the shade Sunset Sky. This is such a gorgeous kind of rusty coral shade. So perfect for more of like a sun-kissed, summery look, which is what we're going for today. So I thought it would be really, really perfect for this. It's a pretty pigmented product. You really don't need a lot of it. And especially because we are gonna be layering a powder on top, I don't need the color to be super intense, but I am gonna go in with my Beauty Blender again. We're pretty much using like one tool for the face for this whole entire tutorial. And I'm going to apply this pretty high on my cheekbones. And he actually applies the blush pretty high up. Like he brings it right onto the temples and this is really to give a very lifted effect to the face. The M Cosmetics Serum blushes are outstanding. They're some of my favorite liquid blushes. Because they have like a serum-like texture, they melt into the skin like a skincare product would. And it also gives such a stunning glow. So this next technique that he does is actually the technique that got me to want to film this video because I just thought it was so genius. It's such a simple technique, but it makes so much sense. What he does is he takes a tinted eye primer and he uses specifically the NARS eye primer in the shade dark. I don't have the shade dark, but I have the shade medium dark. And he uses this almost like a liquid eyeshadow. So he uses the primer to map out the shape of the eyeshadow that he wants. So this does a couple things. First of all, it obviously lays out the shape of the eyeshadow that you are gonna be doing. And it obviously also just creates a perfect long wearing base for you to layer up other eyeshadows on top of. So I'm taking my NARS primer in medium dark and then he takes a fluffy brush and he starts to kind of blend and fluff it on the outer corner of the eye as well as on the inner corner of the eye kind of creating a bit of a halo effect. So the shade that he did use was actually a lot darker than this one so I'm gonna take MAC Groundwork which is close to the color that he used. And he actually also uses this paint pot quite often to do the same technique. I'm just gonna layer it with this primer to just darken it a little bit. There we go. And then I'm just taking out a fluffy brush just to make sure the edges of this is diffused and not harsh because once this does set down, I will not be able to move it since this is a primer. So then he takes a bronzer. He specifically takes Samoa from NARS. So I do have that in my collection, so I figured I might as well use it and he just layers that on top of the primer that he put down, I guess just to kind of set it down, and maybe create a little bit more depth and color. So next he takes an eyeliner. This is the NARS eyeliner in the shade Mambo. And he seems to use this in almost every single one of his tutorials. So obviously this is a favor for him. It's just like a nice chocolatey brown, very rich eyeliner. It's a really pretty color. So he pretty much applies this only on the outer corner of the lash line. He goes very, very close to the lash line towards the middle of the eye. And then he just wings it out slightly with the liner. So I'm just following the shape of the eyeshadow. And it is kind of difficult to get a really precise line with just the pencil, so you are gonna wanna go in with a brush of some sort just to kind of soften the line and to pull it out a little bit and you're gonna be able to get something a little bit more precise 
and smooth as well. Okay, then he goes in with a tan brown color, and I believe it's this one right over here from the palette, and he smokes that on the lower lash line. You could honestly probably use your bronzer for this step, and you'll get the same effect. It's kind of like the exact same color. Besides the eye primer base, this was another step that I was so excited about. This is the NARS Power Chrome Loose Eye Pigment in the shade Shockham, and this is what he uses in the center of the lid, and it makes her lids look wet. They look glossy, they look glowy. This is really, I think, the showstopper of the entire look. I am gonna use this with my finger. It's a very, very chunky metallic, so I am just kind of going to pat off a bit of the excess off the, off the back of my hand because I don't wanna put too much, but I'm just gonna pop this right in the center of my lid where I did not put any of that primer. This is gorgeous he does also apply this on the lower lash line and on the inner corner with the brush but with the brush it's a little bit more difficult to pick up because it is such a flaky and loose eyeshadow so i'm just going to take some of my mac fix plus and dampen a teeny tiny little detail brush and i'm putting that right on the lower lash line kind of mirroring what i did on top right in the center and he does also apply it on the inner corner of the eye as well so for lashes he does use individuals which are going to give a really fluttery natural look to the eye i unfortunately don't have any individuals in my collection right now so i am going to use these guys from MAC. I'm actually not sure what the name of these are, but I'll link them down below if I'm able to find them. But I think these are gonna be perfect because they do have a very fluttery lash look to them. They're kind of crisscross and very sparse. So I cut a quarter of the lash off and I'm going to apply this little part to my eyeballs. All right, so off camera, I just did my brows. I also applied some mascara. So eyes, I think, are pretty much done. So now we're gonna go in with the powder bronzer. So in his tutorial, he uses NARS Casino, which is a bronzer that has a little bit of a sheen. So I am going to use this Laura Mercier Candle Glow Sheer Perfecting Powder in the shade number five. This is not a bronzer. This is actually a face powder, but it's one of my favorite, favorite powders to use as a bronzer because it has this stunning sheen to it without there being any shimmer. And I thought that this would be perfect for this look because this look is obviously all about that summertime glow. This also is a really nice buildable powder. Since it is a face powder, it is quite sheer. So it looks very, very natural looking. So after he goes in with that bronzer that has a sheen and pretty much puts it everywhere to give the skin a glow, he goes in with a second bronzer that's deeper and that's also matte to add some depth to certain areas of the face. So he uses Samoa, which is the same shade that we used on the eyes, and I'm going to pick that up with this Smith 104 brush to contour just as he did on my cheekbone area. So I'm not putting this everywhere like I did with the other bronzer. I'm just putting it on those specific areas that I want to kind of deepen and add a little bit more depth and contour to. This is supposed to be a very bronzy look, so I mean, using more than one bronzer is kind of called for. <laughs> like I said at the beginning, everything he applies is super, super light and in super light layers. So I'm not packing on this bronzer right off the bat. I'm putting on very, very sheer layers of this and just building it up slowly so that things still stay looking nice and natural. I'm also holding my brushes near the end and that's just going to allow me to have a softer touch because when you hold your brush really close to the bristles, you're going to go in and just naturally with a bit of a heavier hand and so the products are gonna apply a little bit heavier to the skin. For his powder blush, he uses NARS Orgasm. Orgasm is a pinky peach blush with some gold shimmer in it. It does have some sheen. He mentions that for the powder, he wants to continue the theme of the glow and also use a glowy powder. So I'm not gonna use Orgasm just because it's not really the tone that I decided to go for for my blush. Since I did use this M Cosmetics Serum Blush in Sunset Sky, I decided to go for this Clinique Cheek Pop Blush and Fig Pop. These two colors complement each other perfectly. And what I really like about the Clinique blushes is that they do have a really gorgeous sheen in them without any shimmer. So I'm just gonna put this exactly where I put that liquid. And this is when blush really starts to pop. This is such a gorgeous color for this look though because it has those rusty red undertones. It just complements that, that bronze that we have going on on the skin so nicely. 
but it still really pops. For the highlighter, I want something that's going to make my skin look glazed and glossy, but I also don't want it to be too shimmery or over the top. So I'm going with my Nabla Skin Glazing Glass Skin Finish Glow Powder in the shade Ozone. This, I mean the name, pretty much says exactly what I want to achieve. This is a beautiful highlighter. It really does just that. It doesn't add any shimmer. It just adds pure glow, which is what I'm looking for. This is a powder highlighter that gives the same effect as a liquid or cream. And that's why I love it because it just makes the skin look so glossy but not powdery and it really just melts into the skin. It doesn't look like it's sitting on top of it. It's such an underrated product. <gasps> look at that. Mm. So for the lips, um, he does something very natural looking. It kind of just looks like her lips but better. It's this nice rosy tint with a lot of gloss. I do have those exact products that he used so I could use them but I did want to do something a little bit different for my look. So I'm first going to line my lips with this ColourPop lippy pencil in the shade little one this is just a nice soft pink for the lipstick I'm going in with glossier cake for my gloss I'm going to go in with my um, hourglass unreal lip gloss in the shade ignite it almost matches the exact tone and sparkle that the eyes have it's so pretty all right guys that finishes off the whole entire look I love this so much and I would also like to say just kind of circling back to the skin this foundation combo the Oma Beauty foundation paired with that NARS booster Wow somehow it has a very airbrushed look like my pores look completely invisible but I still have such a nice glow going on obviously with the help of all my glowy products of course but Wow. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Again, definitely check out Handash and his makeup tutorials because they are so good. Love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.